Welcome to another edition of Politics and Radamek, Berto Woolies, your host. And today we have a very special guest, Daniel Cohen, president of Indivisible Houston. I wanted to talk about this feud that's been happening between Lina Hidalgo and uh, District Attorney Kim Og. And the reason I want to bring this up is these are two Democrats. One is a progressive Democrat. One I have I have always had an issue with, even though I've spoken to her a couple of times, but it concerns me. Daniel, welcome to Politics and Right once again. Thank you, Alberto. I appreciate you. What, let's let's do this. Yeah. Well, look, I, there was an article that came out, and I, and, and it came out after I've been thinking about this for some time. And I want you're one of our most trusted advisors here in Houston as an activist with Indivisible Houston. What's your thoughts on the genesis of the feud between? Kim Og and Lina Hidalgo. So a little bit of context too, if I may, right? We we can because we need to go we need to go back actually 2018 for a second, and then right. I promise to talk about this. Lina Hidalgo was the only person who ended up running to be the Democratic candidate for county judge, but that's only because at the last minute a guy named Mike Nichols, who now is a big Lina Hidalgo supporter, um, who was considering running, decided not to run, citing health reasons. And at the time, actually, I was I was working with the judge, um, and I haven't worked with very many political candidates over the last few years. In fact, it was her, it was Bill McLeod. Um, but a lot of what's happening recently has brought me back into the fold of it, where I'm supporting her and backing her up um, as staff for this next few months, because I'm seeing the hijinks and the shenanigans and the nonsense that's going on and seeing that there needs to be extra support because of people like Kim Ogg. Well, let me see. I want to get this right. You're saying there's a whole lot of shenanigans and manipulations that you're seeing in this attempt to get this young, vibrant, progressive woman who came into power when nobody else. And in fact, I, I, I think, and, and tell me if I'm right here. But the, too often, uh, Emmett, uh, who was the previous judge that she beat, too many darn Democrats were giving him a pass when he did many undemocratic things. Is that correct? Oh, not only is that correct, but the way that the county used to run before Lena Hidalgo was this, was outright corruption. Uh, if you look at the meetings back then, I mean, there was at one point where, I, I as an advocate, I brought to the table a ProPublica story that had broken that demonstrated that they had a Harris County hurricane plan that they failed to implement. And I asked them about, I basically read them the news for three minutes. You can find it, wrote an editorial in the Chronicle later about it, and they didn't respond to it at all. But I'll tell you what, they funded the Astrodome to the tune of hundreds of millions, if not more than a billion dollars later that meeting. The mainstream press only covered the Astrodome funding. And I remember they slammed the gavel when we were out of there in 45 minutes to an hour, which is the way the commissioner's court used to run. I mean, you get out of there in an hour, right? You didn't talk about anything. Nobody had any idea of what was going on. The, one of the reasons that Democrats, former moderate, or that moderate Democrats formerly would back Ed Emmett is because they didn't know any of this stuff was going on. And the reason they didn't know was because Harris County Commissioner's Court was so low profile and therefore lacked any and all transparency. These meetings that last all day long are meetings that show exactly what's going on in Harris County through the morning, through the noon, through afternoon. That's why the meetings are so long. This is easily the most transparent county government that we've ever had in the history of Harris County. Hands down, no questions about it whatsoever. And people don't like that because now you, can, you can't get away with a lot of the stuff. No more smoke-filled rooms. That's uh, there's a heck of a lot less of them. That's for sure. And the people in them, um, you know, who used to, the, the people who used to be able to get away with stuff are no longer uh, able to get away with stuff, which is, is kind of interesting, given um, kind of some of the discussions from mainstream media surrounding it. But when it comes to Og, specifically when it comes to Og, before, um, before you go to Og, because I want to ask sure. a question that I saw in that article. Sure. Uh, is it true? that uh, right in the beginning of Lina Hidalgo's tenure, that uh, Og wanted to have some sort of control over her and presented her with, I want you to hire this person. Well, there was definite, so that, you know, that was, that was a lot, that's interesting because that claim, I didn't know as much about actually, but it's pretty well vetted if you look at the article. Um, and because it's pretty well vetted, if you look at the article, you can kind of trace the sources on that. What I'll say is that um, where this, the big split began uh, is that Og pushed for a larger budget. And right, when I remember you, that. 
And what you, when you're looking at what she's asking for, she's asking for more prosecutors, she's asking for funding. And meanwhile, she's got huge turnover going on in her office. So she can't fill the positions that she has. Um, so it's one. Of, it became really a political feud over budgets more than anything else. And you can trace some of that back. So you take someone like, you know, a drive-by media guy like Wayne Dolcefino, who Kim Og didn't have a good relationship with. Okay, then all of a sudden, right, Dolcefino starts changing his coverage a little bit. Og gets closer to Crime Stoppers, who, by the way, takes more than a million dollars out of taxpayer dollars, your money and my money, so that they can turn around and run political uh, hit jobs left and right in their commercials and out in the public sphere. And you take something like that, and all of a sudden, Dolcefino and Og are best buddies. So, I mean, there's a lot of different, there's, there's a lot of things that are very clearly going on that are highly questionable, but it all comes down to, to, it all comes down to power plays, political hit jobs for budget purposes and for personal power in the county. She doesn't like some of the things she's doing because it gets in the way of her personal agenda. And so Kim Ong doesn't like Lena Hidalgo and it's that simple. Now, as it turns out, uh, Lena refuses to give her a hundred and something more uh, uh, district attorneys. I mean, I mean, uh, prosecutors. And what's interesting, right, is uh, it is the it is a sound thing to do. You get a lot more prosecutors. You make less deals to uh, and and bring a whole lot more trials. You bring a whole lot more trials. You get a lot more convictions. You get a lot more convictions. You get more people in jail. You get more people in jail. You're no longer being fiscally responsible with the taxpayer dollars because now you have to fund more jail space. You have to fund more food. You have to fund more education for all these things that could be done outside of the penal system. Am I correct? Of course, it's, it's a recipe for mass incarceration. And I'll tell you this too, it doesn't address crime whatsoever. Because what you're doing is you're taking people who theoretically have committed a crime, although in a lot of cases we know that the criminal justice system is extremely biased, especially here in Harris County, where we have one of the worst criminal justice histories uh, in the United States. Uh, but if you, but regardless of that, if you take someone who's committed a crime and you've pulled them off the street and you've put them into prison, you're not preventing any crime from happening in the future. You're only focusing on punitive justice for or quote unquote justice, punitive um, retribution related to something that's already happened. So it's all a big smoke and mirrors joke. I mean, it, it's, it's nonsense right now. It's obviously political hits. If she could slam her fist on the table and yell about crime and point her fingers at somebody who opposes her political agenda, then she gets to score points off of that. And it, it's based on a house of cards and I hope to see it come toppling down. Now, interestingly, Daniel, uh, it seems to me like Kim Og is playing the right wing ideological moves or, or trying to play right wing ideological moves, both in, in, in the crime with crime, with bail bonds. But even further, uh, if we take a look at what what she's starting to represent, it seems like what she is doing is making opening the door for others, not necessarily to challenge her but to challenge other Democrats, Lena Hidalgo being the prime one, but there are some ancillary uh, others that get taken in, the judges, et cetera, because it gives the impression, the false impression that is, that it is Democrats, that it is progressives who are, who are soft on crime, when the reality is, is that the, the open gun field that we have in Houston right now is a direct uh, result in, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me the direct result of the laws passed by a Republican Congress in Austin signed by a Republican governor that threw a whole bunch of guns on the streets of Houston. You get more guns. The, the Republicans like to say you get more drugs, more people use drugs. You get more guns, more people use more guns. You're, and not only are you right, but the dynamics of it and the, the number of angles of it um, are, are very easy to trace, right? So you're looking at at Og, like I said earlier, right? Playing buddy buddy with Dolcefino just after he starts covering, uh, you know, starts going after judges. She suddenly is friends with him. They're enemies, and then he goes after judges, and now they're friends all of a sudden. And it's just like that. Then you look at what she's doing with Crime Stoppers, and you see the connections between the people she's connected to and the people who are over on the Alexandra Miller campaign, the Harris County Republican. Uh, GOP county judge candidate, and you start seeing the connections between that. Meanwhile, Mueller is backed by people like Ted Cruz. She's backed by some of some of the most vicious and 
hateful right wing flax at the local level. But when she's asked questions, when she's asked questions, which is rare because the media has not started asking her questions about things. But when somebody on Twitter asks her a question about her take on abortion, she doesn't say things one way or another. This all the problems that are happening right now, right? If you're, you want to talk about crime going up, you look around the country, crime's gone up. Gee, I wonder what could have happened. We have people struggling out on the job market. We had COVID. We had a pandemic that's now entering, I don't know how many waves at this point. It's the most contagious variant that we've ever seen that's now entered it. And to your point, the Republican legislature in Austin has been uh, saddling us with a rickety grid. So we've had uncertainty. They've been cutting education funding. They've been cutting health care funding and they've been blocking health care funding at every single turn. So, yeah, it's no wonder that you're having trouble, but it's really easy for someone to use that for their own political purposes and their own political power, which if is they're exactly allowed to do it. If, if they're allowed to do that. it. And now yes. my question to you as an activist out there, what are rank and file uh, democratic and progressive activists doing to ensure that people like Kim Og, who are doing the anti-democratic thing, and not only that, but using the power of her office to intimidate those who she wants to go against. How is that mitigated? Well, I think there's two things that's happening. One, people are changing how they're spending their time and putting more attention on the issue, whether that's in, in campaign positions or if that's in volunteer positions or whatever it is. Two, some of the people who are out like, you know, uh, uh, the Houston abolitionist collectives and things like that have been calling out uh, Kim Ogg's pro-mass incarceration position, um, you know, more and more often over the last two, three years. I mean, they've made sure to make noise about it. But the other thing is that the electoral people are starting to, to hit doors, that they're starting to come out and actually hit doors um, and, and start looking at this. And there's more and more conversations about it. People are tired of Kim Ogg inside of the Democratic Party, particularly inside of the rank and file Democratic Party. Uh, and she's going to hear about that. She'll hear about that in, a, in the next primary. But in the meantime, uh, I think that there's a lot of discussion uh, in the general activist atmosphere about what's going on. And conversations like the one you and I are having are becoming more and more common. And uh, last question, and this has to do with where these types of campaignings are occurring, because we know that the people that are always used when a politician needs to score a point, the ones that always get used are people of color and poor white folk, because they have no other avenue. So therefore, are we concentrating in these areas of Houston? Uh, let's say Latino districts, let's say black districts, let's say uh, poor white districts, etc., to ensure that the wrath that uh, Kim Ag needs to bring on to the people to give her bona fides to Republicans, that they are not that that they are made aware of this and start fighting for what they have to fight for to ensure that it is it isn't successful. I think that the conversations are definitely happening all over Harris County right now, um, but. Grassroots activists should, and, and all activists should hear what you just said as much as possible. That that should be honestly the, the most common, one of the most common refrains that people hear, especially on the canvassing side and on the outreach side. Um, because Harris County is 60% um, black and brown population and no, no population is a monolith. So we have to be having conversations all over Harris County. We also need to be um, acknowledging the fact that this is an area the size of Connecticut. It's one of the largest counties in the entire country, and it's almost a state unto itself. And it's a state that's repressed by an even larger state the size of France. So when, when you look at it, I mean, look at what's going on right now. When you look at things like the grid, Harris County doesn't have its own grid. That's the state of Texas making bad decisions that come down on the backs of people in our hometown. And we need to be having conversations about things like that. We also need to be having that conversation about Kim Og and the mass incarceration agenda that she pushes. Final thoughts. I want to stress this as much as I can is that, again, something that hasn't been talked about is the Harris County GOP is running an extremist who's charrotting as a, as a, uh, a moderate um, for Harris County judge and Kim Og is in basically in de facto in league uh, with that candidate right now. And people need to be paying attention to what's going on because just like we've seen at the state level and the federal level, it is possible for us to turn back the clock here in Harris County instead of continuing to move forward and make progress. So all of the things that you've talked about, extremely important. And as always, thank you for being a member of the free and independent media, Egberto. I appreciate you. Thank you so kindly. Danielle Cohen, president of Indivisible Houston and one of the major activists, not only in Houston, but around the country. Thank you so kindly for what you continuously bring to our body politic.
Thank you, Alberto. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.